I am Michael Donahue, and I am here today with Scott Lyons. We're going to discuss his short films, sort of cinema in general. It's going to be a real back and forth all over the place conversation, but I'll try to make as much sense of it for everybody as I can. <laughs> if you get a chance to, to check out his films, you must. They're very entertaining. They're gorgeous. And he manages to get emotion out of actors that is someone like myself really gets going for. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give everybody oh, your social media handles? Uh, thank you. That was really kind of you, actually. That was that was really <laughs> nice. Yeah, so the main one that I use all the time is uh, Twitter. So it's just at Scott Lyus, and that is L-Y-U-S, my surname. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, just again, Scott Lyus. And then if you want to see, like, older stuff, my my older short films, um, plus trailers for, like, the new stuff, uh, that is YouTube.com slash Crossroad Pictures. And that, that's basically it. I don't have Facebook. I'm one of them. I'm one of them people. <laughs> I don't like Facebook. <laughs> Dude. I haven't logged in in like two years. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> hey, hello. Hey, how's it going, man? How you doing, buddy? You all right? Um, I don't have a camera, so this will just be audio on my side. That's totally fine. I always no. just record audio, and it's like, I think the last time I did this, they were expecting me to record video. I was like, you guys didn't have to like put makeup on and stuff. Like, you see me in sweatpants, <laughs> right? <laughs> Really like the t-shirt. Cool bloody t-shirt, man. Oh, oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had never gotten to go to Universal Studios uh, for Halloween Horror Nights, even though I've lived out here for uh, like almost 20 years. But uh, thanks to a buddy of mine, I got to go twice this year. and This was by far the best maze. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm hoping that if I come out again uh, at the end of this year with Black Mats that I can uh, I can go. Because they're doing the uh, Universal Monsters thing this year. They had a variation of Universal Monsters last year. Oh, did they? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it was it was something. Uh, what was what's like the last thing that you saw? In general or like new releases? Uh, I'm good with both. Let's go with both. Start with new so, and we'll go general. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, what was the last thing I saw at the cinema? I'll think about it. But last night I um, watched for like the hundredth time um, Nightmare on Elm Street. The first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one, yeah. So like I just, I just love that film. Yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of looking for a horror to throw on. And I thought, you know what? Let's uh, let's throw that one on. Absolute classic. I went out of my oh, way to get this one. Wow, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I, I had to get this one because it came with. Do you know about this? Like. No. Okay, so so this disc. We're looking at the Nightmare series encyclopedia. It's it's a game. It's a maze. Uh, like you're in an asylum and you have to walk through the halls with your remote and you enter rooms and you either get a cool special feature or you get murdered. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. For me, the franchise is 1, 3, and 7. And, like, people want to fight yeah. me, but whatever. For me, the franchise no, no. is 1, 3, and 7. No, I'm with you. <laughs> I like, I, I have to, um, I'm a sucker for if I do a marathon, I've got to kind of, like, watch the whole thing, right? So, yeah. like, number two is painful. It is not good. That's what, like, I just, the more I, like, go back and watch number two, I'm like, oh, man, like. It has one of the cool sequences three. in the franchise, that pool sequence. Okay. But okay. overall, it's not my favorite. Overall, it's, it's just, do you know what? Like, they lent way too, too much into the comedy. Okay, yeah. See, that's, uh, yeah. you want to know what's really unfortunate? The first one I saw was five. Oh. I, I, I was turned off the whole franchise for a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where they try explaining, like, everything, you know. Yeah, I mean, it has some, where they, like, give you know, it's got really cool effects, like, when everybody's popping off of Freddy's back, but, like. Dude. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, but the whole thing about like his mum, um, yeah, and all that kind of like I don't know. We didn't need that, you know. We didn't need like the justification or why. No, no, no. You know, complete fucking asshole. But I felt like like I thought like with the with the reboot, like I thought they had good intentions. It just came out poorly. Yeah, they did have good intentions, and you know what? Like I actually don't mind. What's the dude's name that played Freddy? Is it uh, oh, Jackie? Jackie or Haley? No, like I when yeah. when they announced him, I was real excited and like. Yeah, same. I so, thought he was actually a good Freddy. Like people want to fight me on it, whatever. I thought he was a good Freddy because yeah, no, I still, I, I, I still say when he's when when he's got his uh, claws in the fucking person who's hanging upside down, and he's just like, we get to play for eight more minutes. That whole thing is like one of the creepy, like the, the delivery, just oh. Yeah, <laughs> like he's not bad. He's not bad. I think like the big mistake with that film was almost the design of Freddy. Like I actually think the, okay. um, I think the producers have gone on record and said like they lent very very heavily on real life burn victims right you you could tell too yeah 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 exactly it really made him a lot more tragic than he needed to be yeah like it's just a, it's just a slasher film right so like he's there's that and then like you can't really be sympathetic to someone who does right, the vile exactly. things well, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah 
That's why. That's one of the reasons I find uh, Devil's Rejects so brilliant because who but Rob Zombie can make you sympathize for those humans. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like um, I think he just. I, I think like in the case of Devil's Rejects is more. I don't think he even tries. I think it's just like I'm gonna present these cool fucking characters, and you are like you're probably gonna like them because like they're fucking weird and they're outcasts and you know they're they're kind of like just this summary of fucking horror you know between Spalding and Otis and Baby they're right. just every horror fucking icon coming together you know? um yeah man and like talking of fucking that man like free from hell this year that oh I know right like when he first announced it I'm not gonna lie like in the back of my brain I went why bro because the end is so perfect yeah and like, no, yeah you're... I understand we don't see them die but come on well yeah I mean come on like how do they not die right like and that is that's going to be a good um right they they fucking died they died there's no way they didn't die you don't take <laughs> that many fucking bullets like they literally the whole fucking sheriff's department gunfire raining right. down on and they all got rifles like it was a brilliant yeah. in the slow motion and just the the, the, oh, use, right. the music uh, perfect they, you know that's going to be interesting how are they gonna how's rob bringing them back where does that story go Exactly. Is it like? Is it a prequel, or is it? Is is it? Are they well, superheroes no, somehow? Um, well, apparently, it literally takes place moments after the Devil's Rejects. It oh. picks up. Yeah, it picks up. Like I think he come out the other day and said he done a um like a Q and A somewhere, and he answered a couple of questions, and one of them was um like when does it take place? And he's like straight after, straight okay. after the Devil's Rejects. So that's okay. gonna. But I I think there might be like a little hint in the title, like free from hell. I right. think it is like these dudes fucking died, but like they come back, right? You can't yeah, you like, know, right? yeah, 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 exactly. It, or if it's all just some sort of weird fever dream thing, because right, then just exactly, damage yeah. we can start to get. Because like, like, did you see Thirty One? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, okay, yeah. I went to one of the one of the the in cinema screenings around here. Right, and yeah. uh, so when, is it Richard Drake? Is that his name? Uh, yes, I think so. Richard yeah, Drake, yeah, the, dude, the, the Night King, and he's also, yeah, the, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I think the first time I noticed that dude was he, he's in um, Hannibal Hannibal Rising, right? He's the guy that gets like choked out on the tree. Uh, I don't, is he? Yeah, I've seen they, Hannibal Rising, but I mean, because like, his face have... was bur- is burned into my brain because like the, the the effect that they got going on is like as he's getting choked, like his teeth like come out of his mouth a little bit. It's the weirdest fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, I haven't seen that guy. Like I haven't seen Thirty One, uh, not Thirty One. Sorry, I haven't seen Hannibal Rising. Oh, okay. In, like I weren't actually a massive fan of it, so I think I saw it that once, and then like I, so, I, 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 about the same. Like, but I, I was really taken with the imagery and like his performance, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it, it just, it was one of those like it was a really good looking film, and like everybody is there and and doing their jobs. It just came together a little bizarre to me. Yeah, I mean the the problem is you have like you have Silence of the Lambs right to live up to. Right. You ain't you ain't doing it like anything tied to Silence of the Lambs. It's not like it's just that is a perfect film. It's, it's perfect. It is just absolutely yeah. perfect. So it's <laughs> yeah. not, like I can't how think do you... of anything that's 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 wasted there. And like no, no, I, no. I understand like like some people want to have discussions about the implications of certain characters but like as a film <laughs> oh yeah like it's uh, uh yeah you you don't it's it's an absolute masterpiece an absolute masterpiece it really is do, do you know what i'm talking about though like with, i listen to infinity podcasts you know what i mean i'm all over the yeah, place yeah, yeah, yeah. and and one of the ones i was listening to uh recently was an lgbtq plus podcast and they were specifically speaking about how the trans culture was really 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 oh yeah, impact yeah by the film because because of um buffalo Be- bill because of bill yeah and it's like it's, it's like it's like i had never considered that as who i am and just hearing it i was like oh shit i can't even imagine but like still the movie though like yeah no uh yeah i i completely see that it's not it's one of them things where it's like like i I get asked all the time about commentary on uh racing films sex in films and stuff like that and and like my take on it is always like i am a white straight man it's not my place to comment on like i, I think that's where like a lot of right that's where a lot of people feel that uh, fall down right it's like you can't you can't come at this shit especially as a white straight man and be like here's my fucking an opinion on it and this is why i'm right because like guess what you're not because you, you're only seeing you it from like <laughs> right and, and you're only seeing it from a side that has been like fucking like we've been given everything right we've been like the whole fucking world is like 
almost like dictate you to us, right? We haven't had the hardships other people have. So like for me to comment on that stuff would be wrong because then like I would rather give that voice and give that opinion to someone that is is affected, right? And someone that so like for me to go like, yeah, I love that film, which I do, like I, I fucking worship that film. But for me to like just dismiss what it done for like the trans culture exactly exactly stuff like that like that is that would be so fucking wrong to me to do because like it, I, it never impacted me in that way it never impacted like my life in that way so the only people in my mind that warrant that um voice are people that that it impacted and then like we can listen to them we can discuss it with them and and you can see where it goes with that but i get what they're saying like i get what they're saying because i have heard the argument right and i've heard the argument on both sides of the fence okay. and you always get like you always get the argument of it impacted the the trans community this way because and then you also get the idea of like well he's a killer and you know there's plenty of killers in films that are white and you know we say in that affects white people and stuff like that but it doesn't but the but the other side of it is with the trans community in films especially and i know this was only like 90 like maybe one or two right 91 91 i want to say it is how many other trans characters are in films right so like if the world's only fucking view of a yeah. trans character is this fucking serial killer then yeah, like they're gonna think it's fucking you know this this unnatural weird thing especially like when you're battling the whole fucking idea of you know the the religious context of like what fucking men and women should be and and all that fucking bullshit i don't buy into but you, yeah exactly right so i was raised this, very very catholic sir yeah i i mean i like i my i a whole division of my family are catholic and it's it's this constant thing where i'm like look i and again like my my kind of outlook on it is the same look i ain't gonna like completely shit on you like for what you believe in until you're not to believe in stuff but like when that transitions over to you telling other people how they should live their lives you yeah. telling other people what's right and wrong you telling other people they're no good and that you know this whole fucking concept of you're going to hell without like come on man like that's yeah like what's that you know but uh, yeah, but like bringing it back around to the Buffalo Bill thing, right? So if your only mainstream view of a of a trans person, so so a guy that that's dressing up as a woman, so you know that can impact on drag queens and 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 you know any anyone in that vein. If that's your only view of it, that's why they're fucking pissed off, right? Because they haven't got the other side where it's like, yeah, there's also this great fucking, you know, this is why we're so good. So, like, when people make the argument of, like, well, you know, when this person's in a film and they're a killer, it doesn't impact on this. Yeah, but you've also got the other side where the fucking police officers are, like, white dudes doing fucking great stuff, right? So, like, yeah. you don't have that you don't have that same argument because you're not singling out one, one thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a... No, no, I'm, I, I, I totally get what you're saying, man. It's and it's and it's it is it's one of those like slippery slope situations to discuss at at all. But at the same time, to to not have any kind of a discussion is wrongheaded, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, there has to be a discussion, and there also has. I think there does have to be a discussion on both sides. Um, you you have to open that stuff up to other sides. Like um, I re like last year I'd done a I was invited to do like a panel talk on filmmaking it's kind of like, like it was like a convention but they wanted to be all inclusive bring everyone in it, everyone was welcome right it, it was a place where you go you feel good everyone's welcome and like i love that idea right when i get invited go to the convention and do it i was like yeah like i love that i love that idea of this all inclusive space where you can just go be your fucking self and have a good time right but then yeah. but then when i was there i i was on the panel and i was talking just like i am now and as you know when you met me a few years back at Street Fest and also on this podcast right now. Yeah. When I talk, I swear, right? I don't I don't mean it in a bad way. I don't mean it in an offensive way. Just where I grew up, like many people of our generation, swearing yeah. just become part of the way you, you spoke, right? You don't and, and also like I if I wanna be offensive to someone, if I if I wanna insult someone, I don't actually need to swear to do that. So for me, swear it swearing was like it 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 wasn't offensive to me. Right. So, so that's just why I brought up. So when I was on this panel and, and so, you know, people were asking me questions and I the first question I got asked, I, I answered and I started speaking. And then I got told off by the moderators 
of the panel because I swore and I was like, I like I on my life I thought they were joking. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you're jo- like you're joking, right? Like, and I was like, no, 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 sorry. Like one of our rules is that you can't swear because it may offend people, and we don't want to offend people. And why I kind mm-hmm. of get that, mm-hmm. my argument then on the other side was the problem with trying to be all inclusive, but then also setting rules so people don't get offended is then rules are also going to offend people, right? Because oh, like, because yeah. or, right, or, or not so much offend people, but make people feel uncomfortable, right? Where like me and a few other people there that again, just swear when you're talking and, and it, like I, you know, don't buy into this concept of like, you're a lesser person because you swear when you talk or you're less intelligent and any other, right? No, 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 I don't buy into any of that. So like this idea that now every question I was asked, I had to like carefully watch what I was saying so I didn't swear. So like straight away, because you're because you're doing this this all inclusive thing where then you set your own rules of we don't want to offend people. Well, now you've made other people feel uncomfortable because they can't be themselves. And it was like it was just this really like strange thing that we don't want to be stood, uncomfortable. Right. right that, that stood out yeah. where, where it was like, I really wanted to go and do this convention and speak at this convention because I thought it was this great idea that it was all inclusive. It was a place where you could go just be yourself, just you know. It, it weren't even going to be discussed it's like you're there you're who you are feel bloody comfortable in your own skin and be who you are and then like i come away feeling fucking uncomfortable about who i am so it's like it's this amazing fucking thing where i'm like oh right so actually what you're trying to do is you're saying certain things are okay in our world but certain things are not and i think that's where so many people butt heads because it's like what you believe in is wrong and then other people are like no what you fucking believe in is wrong and it like you're just biting heads right and like and, and it comes back to what you said right you need to have a conversation about it. you need to have a dialogue because if we're not talking about it on both sides like yeah, there's no winners there's no winners we're just gonna argue about it are, are you a south park fan yeah okay so do, 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 do you know that the, their thoughts on offense is like either everything is okay or nothing is okay yeah yeah and i agree yeah, and I agree. I agree. I, I, I'm a very strong believer in that because once you start putting rules into place of this is offensive, that's not offensive. Like straight away, you are, you, you know, you're drawing a line in the sand, man, and you're saying, you, you know, it's it's censorship, right? It's censorship to the point of view where you're telling people what they can and can't do, and the other like there's certain things right there's certain things there's certain words out there that have really really bad meaning behind them right and i'm not like i would never ever take away from them words there's certain words you should never ever ever say to people of a certain race people of certain religions stuff like right there's certain words you should never do reason is because then words were created and come out of this idea where they were purely fucking created to be used as an offensive term, right? And to they and were to, created for hatred. Like, for hate. hatred. They were created. Right. So like that's not what I'm talking about. Like that shit like should never be fucking used. There's no fucking excuse to that. 100%. But then, you know, we're like coming back to this thing that, you know, where we're all bloody banned from swearing. Like you you just you just, you know, you're going a little bit farther. You're going a little bit farther. But like, yeah, like your South Park point, yeah, man. Like I completely agree with a lot of that. Especially where comedy's involved. Yeah. Like because I because comedy should be and, and like most media, it should just be this open playing field of, um, you know, of expression stuff like. That. And again, like don't don't like go down the road of using language that was purely created for fucking hatred. Like that's not right. Like don't do that stuff. You know, in South Park they don't do that stuff. Like you you don't see them using certain words that that come with that history. But with regard to what they do practice, yeah, I'm fully on board with that. Definitely. Except that actually one of <laughs> My girlfriend is black. One of her favorite absolute South Parks is the one where it bridges where like all the richers come to town. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The Will, the Will Smith, and one the, where they're all moving in. Yeah, yeah. And the way that episode, do you remember how that episode ends? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like that is one of her favorite punchlines in the entire series. Well, yeah, of course, because it's like it is played on uh, on the idea of how ridiculous it is as well, right? Right, and it's exactly. played up because of it, and and it that punchline doesn't work without the the stuff that comes like directly before it, right? Exactly. Where where it's just like oh like we got rid of them because they're rich and and stuff, right? And it's like oh that was the but it's it then it it's also it's also this great commentary on how fucking stupid it is just to like hate on people because 
in that episode, they're of a different class to you, right? So it's it's like, oh, these people are rich. Like, so fuck them. They're completely different to us. We hate them. And then, like, that line at the end just brings it back to reality. And what they're saying is, like, don't forget the joke we're actually trying to make it. It is fucking ridiculous to judge people on the color of their skin. Like, that's that's what that line meant, you know? But And again, like, you you got to see that stuff. And that, that's the fucking genius behind it, to be honest. No, those guys, those guys are next level. Like, I mean, have you seen Cannibal the Musical? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I, I have a Spadwinkle shirt. <laughs> <laughs> a couple years ago, I was at a convention, and I had a rather lengthy conversation with Dean Bacar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the next year, he was there, and, uh, like, I got... Oh, this. cool, man. And, uh, like, I don't even have a PSP, but, like, I have a Cannibal on that UMD format. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Me. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good times, man. Yeah, they they are they're fucking geniuses, man. Everything they do, cool, cool, they just like they just know what they're doing, you know. They just they, you know they it's, really got great. They, they, they and then the whole like, did you see Six Days to Air? No, no, oh. I, I, no, no, uh, I haven't seen it. It's on Netflix over here. I don't know if it's on Netflix over there. It's a documentary about how they make the show, and it specifically right. chronicles the six days where they made the Human Centipede episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I don't. I don't think that's on Netflix you, over here. Oh man! Oh, you gotta find it. You yeah, gotta, I'll, I'll try to find it. You gotta find your find it. Yeah, 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 I'll try and find it, man. The reason the show is able to be as relevant as it is is because it's literally written, voiced, and animated in six days. Oh yeah, it's like it's yeah. yeah they've always said that, haven't they? It's the turnaround. It's the because like when they set out, they was like, we can't be the Simpsons right. where we take six months to make an episode. Like we've got to, and yeah, like you said, it's that whole, because their whole thing is being relevant. So like you have to get that stuff turned around in, and it, I mean, it's amazing, like yeah. unbelievable, like six days to turn around an episode. It's crazy. And they're That's always crazy. like, even, even like the unfunny of South Park still has a few giggles. Like, oh, yeah. they're all like, yeah, they've all got something. Yeah. You know, they've all got something yeah yeah definitely good size man well clearly uh you and i are, are very similar in that we can go on and on and on and on so we're gonna have to do this like a bunch of times <laughs> oh definitely yeah yeah definitely uh, it, even if we can't talk about it today uh, at yep. some point um i've always been fascinated by the video nasties as i'm certain you must have been oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i mean that was like that was my growing up right like that's that yeah. was that's what got me into into film. Then, so like, how did you first up... see um, uh, Evil Dead? Right. So like I didn't grow up. I was born in eighty eight. Right. Okay. So it was I was born I was born at like the back end of when all this shit was getting banned and stuff like that. Right. But then when you're growing up, like you would discover a lot of these films and, and, and not even so much the more well known stuff like Evil Dead and stuff like that. Like a lot of the like Italian horror and stuff like that. You you know, you like, were just like all those were on that list. Like I don't know about the entire list. I just like I read way long time ago, I read probably a chapter worth of a book on it and it was just like, yeah. Oh my god, I need to know more. And I just yeah, didn't. I mean like anything that was about like Canada cannibals okay like holy fuck like all that shit was banned like cannibal holocaust yeah like all, all that man that that was like that was done like but them right so you would like discover them because someone's fucking dad would have like this vhs yes. shitty dodgy copy of this film that would be like handed around the fucking playground you know and eventually like someone would be caught with it right and it would be like the end of the fucking world because these oh, kids we need that. Fucking... right yeah yeah exactly right <laughs> But then, like, as I was about, like, 12, 13, okay. something like that, I had a friend who lived around the corner from me, and his dad was the biggest fucking, like, VHS collector. Like, and then, like, at that time, like, transitioning into, like, early DVDs, right? But right. he had this kind of cupboard, which should have been, like, a side cupboard in his house where, like, you could, I don't know, store, like, fucking canned food and stuff like that. Oh, but yeah, he, was yeah. like, he was like, no, 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 no. He was like, these shelves are going to be <laughs> full of vhs right so like every saturday and sunday me and my friend daniel we would just go in to this fucking cupboard we would pull out all different vhs's we'd sit in front of this tiny fucking box screen tv we're like oh my god look at this fucking tv like i can't believe we're watching this stuff on this 15 inch right. you know, tv yeah yeah exactly right but that's how i felt the first time just a little aside like the first time i saw 2001 don't hate me i didn't like it 
because I watched it on a shitty old cathode ray tube. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. One of my first DVDs, and I was like, "What is this?" Cut. How to- old? How old was you? Mm-hmm. 16 16-ish 15 right, 16 see, right see this is the thing right so like there's there's a few there's a few films I watched when I was like in my teens and I was nowhere close to having the intelligence I needed <laughs> to right. fully understand right what what these films were doing so, like when i was a teenager i was just fucking full of shit man i was like i was full of shit so like when i like even when i like got to like 17 18 right i was in college i was doing filmmaking and photography and just like any 18 year old that like gets into film you're just so fucking full of yourself like with the films you're in you're just like oh yeah like to the point a dude who was in my class introduced me to kevin smith films okay. right before i say what i'm about to say i love kevin smith i adore kevin smith and we, right. we need to have that conversation. I got. Right. I spent four hundred dollars on Red State. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. There you go. Right. When I first was introduced to Kevin Smith, uh-huh. man, I thought it was trash. But what? What was? What was the film? You well, were well, here's the, here's the thing. This guy did not fucking do him justice. He introduced me with the first Jay and Silent Bob film. Oh, that's so rude. Right. Right. I didn't even go in with fucking Clerks or. Clerks. Oh my god chasing amy or anything right i i went in my entry was dogma right (laughs) right so it's a different it's a different story so i went with jay and silent bob and i was like this is just shit it's a cartoon that references itself and you don't get it right and and the other thing is i didn't really get the reference because i didn't have this fucking build up of these guys in this universe for fucking 10 years right so yeah i was like this is this is just shit and i i just weren't and then it weren't until i started watching he's an evening with kevin smith yeah, and the yeah. way he would talk about stuff and oh man like I, I i ate that shit up i love that going off that you know i went and watched clerks and, and chasing amy dogma and it just yeah I, I love the dude now and even to the point where like red state yeah man i fucking love red state dude i saw it three times theatrically okay three oh, okay okay <laughs> like, yeah I love movie... you know what man? I, I i even like tusk yeah no i i yeah. quite like tusk i got to go to the la premiere and oh, nice. then I paid to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that that movie's like special because I gotta be honest, like so when I was at the premiere, I like I remembered the podcast where he laid out what he was gonna do yeah, sitting yeah, there, yeah. and then the actual movie we got was so genuinely creepy and deeply affecting. I love horror to death, but I I don't know about you personally. There's like I could if you if movies that scared me, Carrie, The Witch. Uh, yeah like i yeah, love yeah. horror but it doesn't get me yeah um, same. yeah and yeah. there's a couple of like 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 when, when, when he pulls tusk into the water bro i was not okay with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i'm the same i don't like i don't get i know it's weird like my my outlook on horror ever since i started watching it, it didn't like scare me in a way it like scares other people and i think this is why i don't really like jump scares right. um stuff like that. i don't really think they're effective unless you're doing quite well like i think james wan does them quite well because they always mean something like if if the jump scare is someone's friend jumping out on them it's a wasted scare right because you're not meant to be scared by that shit but if the jump scare is like oh man what fucking film is it the conjuring with um where she's like in the fucking pitch black with like the lighter and then the hands come behind her and like clap that might have scared me if I hadn't seen it in every trailer. Nah, yeah, that's okay. That's a, that is a fucking trailer. Like I'm not trying to. We got like, a big trailer problem. Anyway. Okay, but just Real. that, just that was like that's that's a fucking jump scare. Like that's a good fucking jump scare, right? Because because it's the character is like shitting themselves in that moment too, right? So okay, yeah. So so it makes sense to to do that to yours. Another like and I tell you again, right? Like jump scares don't get me too much, but I'd be lying if I said they never got me. Do you know the Same. one jump scare? that got me more than fucking anything, right? Paranormal Activity 3. The I've only seen the first scene. one. Oh, man. Right, I'm, not, I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to say Paranormal Activity 3, the okay. kitchen scene. That's all I'm going to say, right? And, right? and I watched it in, like, a packed theatre. The fucking roof come off that. It, some people think, like, oh, it could be a cheap jump scare. To me, it meant a little something because it um, really dived into, like, the anxiety of the character in a way, like, she is just fucking crumbling under this okay. it, it's probably a so like shit. the first the first paranormal activity 
like when, when I talk about jump scares, because typically they don't get me either. Yeah, yeah. The end of the first paranormal activity is probably the most effective one for me because I I truly didn't care about the first two acts of this movie at all. I didn't like them. I didn't like the presentation. It, yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it, was, it was a personal thing. And like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, no, like I get it. I get it. I get it. I just, whatever. But then the third act starts and I'm like, oh, wait, what? This, this is where we've been going? Or this is this the yeah, same yeah, movie? Yeah. Okay, all right. And like, if I hadn't been sitting in the back of my chair, I would have just flown into the back of the thing, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And similarly, did you ever see The Unborn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, okay. yeah. Like that's like one of like what I feel is a, is like PG thirteen horror done right. Like that was done right. I feel I felt uh, Escape Room was done right. But like the the jumpy out of the mirror thing, I just similarly I was just chilling and all of a sudden like all my muscles were like behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and then, no, uh, there are there are some at, uh, at Shriek Fest, There was a picture. It was <clears throat> called Echoes of Fear. And, okay. Uh, that had. Two jump scares that got me. Oh, okay. Was it a feature or? A... It was, yeah. Yeah. I always love when like people I share very similar taste with, such as yourself, recommend something I haven't even heard of. Yeah. Okay, like so... that's that's my favorite type of fucking horror to go into, right? Because the, the the problem is like I'm so fucking obsessed with the genre, and I'm so I'm so obsessed with film right in general there isn't like much stuff i don't really go into much anymore if anything without already some built-in expectation of and what or knowledge like, of the thing right yeah yeah, yeah. like same. one of the i've got like question on podcast before where like it's like oh what film did you see recently it really disappointed you and the truth is i don't actually go in i don't go to the cinema and watch films at this point because i already know but like one i can tell by the trailer if sank's like just getting like shit online and stuff like that there's like people and i'm not just talking like just the social media thing but if people i know that i respect and just not even critics but like friends and stuff like that and like they didn't get it they didn't like it i don't tend to go and watch that stuff so i don't tend to i do see some stuff i get disappointed with not really did you see brightburn did you guys get brightburn uh we have but i haven't seen it yet we just okay. got it. Like, we literally just got it. The single most brutal image I may have ever seen in an American movie. Really? Wow, okay. Look at his face. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. okay. I don't know if I've mentioned this. I'm red colorblind. Even being red colorblind, I was still vocal and like, oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Like, it's, it's a slow burn of a movie. If you've seen one trailer, you know exactly what it is. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But I'm good with it. I'm good with it. It's like a, a buddy of mine... Uh, who actually works at the company that owns the Halloween franchise, he didn't really care for the movie because he felt they only made it so they could do this thing and one other thing. Oh, okay. Dude, it's... <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the the only movie that I that ever made me feel like how normal people describe watching a horror movie makes them feel was Cannibal Holocaust. I was just unsettled to a degree that I, I can't describe. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it again eventually. Well, they're like... Uh, uh... Of the whole thing, or what really, like, threw you off? Just the whole film? Or was there, like, one or two scenes that really stuck out? Like, you and I in films, like, for me, the greatest era of cinema is is that 70s era. And it, and it has a lot to do with look, performance, and everything that was just sort of, like, coming into its own and becoming a new thing. And more, anyway, yeah, that's completely a conversation agree. for a different time. But the look of 70s cinema is something that, that really gets me. And so the fact that it was sort of like this melding of what you would now call found footage, like a real sort of, uh, look, we found these tapes. We What are we going to do with this? And then we, yeah, and then yeah. we watched this shit, and it was like everybody on screen was deplorable. Like even the woman was implicit in, even though she didn't like participate in it, she was implicit in the rape because she didn't say anything. So by the time that it gets to the imagery that that got it banned everywhere, the, it was like, I was like, it was it wasn't as effective as maybe as as, as it could have been to me, because I was like, oh, oh you deserve this. I'm okay with like, have you seen Cannibal Ferox? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Cannibal Ferox to me at least has like a Green Inferno sense of fun, but Green Inferno is like another conversation because like that was like great and then weird. <laughs> yeah i wasn't i wasn't a mess fan of i actually thought i was gonna fucking love that and i, I didn't. did too and and i did for like the first two acts and then i was confused 
but so like the, the whole thing was it was like it just it felt so real that it was like like I understand that it like I mean it was cartoonish in like some of its uh, over the top white people going into white people shit, but at the same time like I can watch people be dismembered on in cinema all day long because I know it's fucking fake. Like I've seen Flower of Flesh and Blood. Have you seen Flower of Flesh and Blood? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like it looks like Jello, but if yeah, I saw yeah, 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 a 19th right. generation yeah, yeah. VHS copy, like maybe it would look real. You know what I mean? The a- animal violence? Oh, fuck right off. Oh, the is it Holocaust that where they killed? Holocaust? The, uh, yeah, going back to tur- Holocaust. That's what I was. Yeah, is it where they killed a turtle? A turtle and something. Because the else. the turtle was real, wasn't? It? Yeah, like, like I understand the, that they the that they ate turtle soup that night. So the like they didn't was, waste the animal. Yeah, yeah, but the word but was like, like bro, but the um, the one that gets me, and it's weird, right? Because like when I was like younger and I decided I wanted to be a filmmaker, I was going down two avenues, right? One was directing, the other one like creature design, okay, and stuff, and like and and horror maker. And when I first saw, Ho- I, it is Holocaust, right? Where you've got the girl on the spike yes. on the beach. That didn't freak me out because again, what you said, like films are not real, right? They're fake. So. I'm fucking looking at it. It didn't freak me out. How the fuck they do that? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, how did they actually fucking do it? Didn't the director, like, when he come back to America, he got, like, taken to court, and oh, he yeah. had to prove they didn't, like, kill people oh, yeah. and stuff like Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a big deal. Was, people thought it was, like, it was 100% real. It's crazy. Bro. I mean, it was it was flower of flesh and blood where, like, they didn't even believe it when they produced the actors. They had to produce making of footage before they believe it was fake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And then, like, and then that stuff is taken to a whole new level, like in the nineties with um Blair Witch, where they pay the actors to go and disappear. Oh, oh I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they like they make the Blair Witch in, and then they were like, right, so no fucking press tour, no, no, like you, you guys are fucking dead for the next six months. Like, I love <laughs> that. I love that. I love that idea. Really hammer it home. And didn't they? Um, I'm pretty sure. They change their IMDb's and they think as well to say they were deceased. I believe you. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. I'm pretty that sure. One. I'm pretty sure when the film come out, they, or if you went on the actors' IMDb's, it said like they had died that that year. They had come out. Oh, it's crazy, That's man! Ridiculous. Like, what what great marketing? Possibly the the best. I can't really think of any marketing that's better than the Blair Witch. That is like that is ain't you yeah, just look no, at no, nothing quite. They've tried a few times. I know there was a bunch of Matrix crazy coolness and like yeah, but that, cool the, Matrix. the Matrix is its own discussion. <laughs> yeah, the Dark Knight done some really cool. Uh, yeah there was yeah. was it dark knight or dark knight rises where it was like the social media campaign that like so many people had to like go to the website for it to like reveal pixel by pixel where it was it was um i think they done it with both they first done it for the first ever photo reveal of heath ledger as the joker yeah yeah i can't remember what you had to do it might have been that one or it might have been on dark knight rises a game that was played around the world where yeah. you had to go to like different cities find an easter egg <laughs> upload that photo yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then like it would reveal I'm real, man. It's like that's that's fucking unbelievable marking. Yeah, I'm like I'm all about that stuff. Cool, cool. I definitely want to discuss the, the two shorts you've already done. And then yeah, as yeah. much as you're willing to tell me about your new one. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. after we've done that, I'm I'm willing to go deep on Rocket Man, but I, I wanted to see it again before we <laughs> talked about it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Because I really loved the movie. I just didn't know that it was going to be so depressing. It, it was really difficult for me to, to decompress how I felt about the filmmaking when I was left like a wet noodle, pretty much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Okay, I'll give like, you... the more I think about it, it's like I've never seen such a brilliant gorgeous love letter to both cinema and broadway wait like, exactly uh, and how much did you like going in how much did you know about elton john okay, like, I mean, he's, he's personal, like. Well, like the the easiest answer is nothing because right, okay. all i really know about the guy is like radio hits songs yeah and yeah, like yeah. a couple of uh like like clips of interviews like i know yeah, nothing yeah, right okay so so i guess that's why you got it like i i'm a big fucking elton john fan Anyway, uh, you know, after I saw the film, like I was very vocal about how much I loved it. Like I like genuinely in fucking school, you know, whatever fucking kids were listening to, you know, like I was a fucking old, like I love fucking old John. And you can't be a fucking a kid growing up, <laughs> you know, in the, in the and time. Not, and like, like we grew up, right? And, and it'd be like, it'd be like a fucking cool thing, right? It's not like now where people are wearing vintage fucking band t-shirts and shit like that, right? Weren't fucking like that. So, you know, it, it weren't a cool thing to be a part of. But I, so I, I've kind of always been obsessed not not like fully obsessed with him like I am with some other bands, but um, I've always known the deep history. So I knew the real depression side of it. I knew the real trouble we had with a lot of stuff. So for me, because I knew that stuff, I was prepared for that. 
but I just and also I had seen an interview of him way before they made it where he said one of his main conditions for making a film was that they didn't really leave anything on the table yeah Elton yeah yeah he were, his one thing was like don't leave anything you don't need to make me look good he's like oh, you can okay, show really? yeah he's like you can show I was a fucking drug addict you can show that I had my fucking heart broken I, I just didn't know where I was going and all this kind of stuff I loved all that stuff you know it's weird right because before that we had like Bohemian Rhapsody and okay, I didn't see it I, I like it it's good I know there's like yeah I'm not 100% against it it's just I was so ready for the Sasha Baron Cohen one that when it didn't happen and we got we, we got Bohemian Rhapsody yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't in a rush to see it yeah and I just didn't I know what you mean I know what you mean. I mean, again, like, I'm a massive Queen fan, so I went to see it on that basis. I heard all the fucking praise Remy was getting for his performance as Freddy. And I was like, okay, like, I've got to see this film. I want to see this film. Then you've got the whole Brian Singer fucking angle, right? So, like, yeah, yeah, this is a bit shit. I don't really know. But then, like, I don't know. It's a weird thing, right? Because it's like, you don't want to support Brian Singer once you hear all the stuff that comes out about him. But at the same time, you don't want to not support everybody else that worked on that movie of other people that worked on a movie right like that's the that's the tough fucking part of it like it's not just one dude that made that film it was hundreds exactly. of people that, made that film and i liked bohemian Rose. don't get me wrong i did I, I did like it it was good the ending is really really nice with a live a performance but yeah. there, oh, so that's the, they ended on live a kind of yeah yeah okay there's a little I don't know, there was a little something missing. And what I love about the Elton John one, and the other thing, the other problem with like Bohemian Rhapsody is they play really fucking loose with the facts. So they right. change shit in that. Like, which which all films do, right? All films based on a real person. Like, they're going to change some shit. We know that. That's fine. But you need to, like, have a way around it, right? My problem with Bohemian Rhapsody is they, like, presented that shit as if it was gospel. So okay. when it's like, it didn't happen like that at all. Like, it's the whole thing, like, he tells them where he's got AIDS. And, like, it wasn't like that at all. Like, the way they present in a film, it was so far from that in real life. Okay. When you, like, present that as, like, this is what really happened. I don't know. That, like, jars with me a little bit. When when there isn't a reason in the film for it not to be a certain way. So what okay. I love... Yeah, okay. Right. What I loved about Rocketman, absolutely loved about Rocketman, is it is told from the point of view of Elton looking back on his life. Yeah. And like memories. I like, so I like, like that mechanic of like waking right. up so, and skipping time. So, yeah, exactly. Right. So the idea of that is if all the and all the facts in Rocket Man are not exact, in my in my opinion, you get away with it because not all your memories are exact. Right. So if you're thinking back on your life and you're, yeah. you're thinking shit's going to change, it might not be exactly how it happened. Rocket Man found a very creative way of dealing with that. that I don't think Bohemia Rhapsody did. Okay. So like and, and, and I would I for me, Rocket Man is a much better film than Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay. So it's really interesting that it might not get all the press and award buzz Bohemian Rhapsody did. So I really a... hope that it does get some awards. Yeah, I do. Though, because it's a beautiful film. It's, it's, it's strange that um there ain't that much talk about it. When Bohemian Rhapsody come out, uh, like that's all you heard, right? It right. Even like the, the fucking awards even like survived the whole Brian Singer stuff, yeah. right? That was like the same time, but he still survived that. And I don't, I don't know. There must be saying behind the scenes with Rocket Man why it's not getting the same kind of push for the awards. It's, it's weird. It's strange. I mean, I've, I've come to accept that my line of like what is offensive is apparently astronomically different from a lot of people's. What is explicit to you? It's all like under frame and every, like I found that oh, scene. Oh, you, you, you that mean like the guy Giggles you mean the gay love scene? Right? Yeah, like my my thing with that is like the, you saw two dudes somewhat naked, right? I say you saw them somewhat naked because yeah. you never saw any any full frontal right. stuff on, right. right? So if you find that really graphic and offensive, that says more about you than it does about the scene. Thank you. Right, because how many naked? Yeah, how many the opposite of that have you seen? Right, yeah. exactly. How many how many heterosexual? love scenes have you seen where actually your opinion is probably we didn't see enough right, right? Yeah. so if you're watching that shit and you're like yeah that was fucking offensive that was like grotesque like i oh, know go fuck yourself yeah. come on it's 2019 for fuck's sake like get over it and also the other thing is right if you're going to a film about elton john's fucking life and you're offended that he's having gay sex maybe right. don't go to the elton john fucking like why are you there it, it, it's like going to a fucking little richard fucking biopic and being like oh shit he's gay right. fucking yeah <laughs> like come on 
Like, get over yourself. People that are like, oh, it's really like offensive. So, like, oh, come on, man. Like, genuinely speaking, why is that shit offensive to people? Like, I don't get it. Like, why? Why is that? Are you a uh, people? I've offend- also never understood that. Why? But right, that's what I don't get. Like, why are you actually offended by gay people? Like, I, I just do not fucking get. That. One of the one of the jobs I had, like, I was opening up a bookstore. Like, I took it from an empty like husk of a building to a full bookstore right, and it yeah. was before the scanning devices were working so you had to look and read and decide where things yeah. went and i swear to you i was the only person in the building who was willing to do it with the gay section everybody i mean there were dudes who were doing like like ridiculously comical things like just flipping the books so they didn't have to see the pictures it's on so the covers weird. and i'm like are where are we right now <laughs> like is it like are people offended because they're fucking scared like it's contagious and if they look too long (laughs) like they're gonna be gay it's just so fucking ludicrous are you what the fuck like why are you so truly like unless unless it is like a fear that it might start to get you going like what what you're straight every straight sex scene doesn't turn you on right so like why is it offensive versus just something you don't want to see Right, exactly, exactly. It's just, it's, it's just, it's love, right? At the end of that, yeah, exactly. Love. love is love, man. Love. Whatever. Get the fuck <laughs> off, man. Like, like, and the other thing is, you don't buy fucking coming out of it and going, yeah, that was a really beautiful fucking scene between two men. They don't make you fucking gay. Like, why right. are people so scared to be like that? People have to distance themselves so far from that. Then they're like, oh, it was fucking offensive, and I can't. And it's like it wasn't. You're you're fucking offensive by like ridiculous backwards mentality. Well, to... and like I've got a whole other like filter for a lot of that kind of stuff because like I mean I I, I graduated from an eighty five percent Hispanic high school in Southern California. Right. Yeah, yeah. So like the machismo that you already get in a in in in, 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 in a in a testosterone laden high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. add like ten more layers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Like I hopefully like we're gonna lose that shit soon because no one needs that trouble. You know, no, no, no one needs that shit. Like just fucking drop that now. Like come on. Like like I said, it's 2019, right? We we got a lot more fucking shit to be worrying about. Yeah people's stupid fucking ideas about who people should love and who they shouldn't love and you know come on man just like just just let people love who they fucking want right don't change your life that, that's the, like me other side that's the other side of it i've never like i never understood even from a very early age it's like why the fuck do you care so much like it doesn't if people are gay or not how does that i don't get it i just don't understand how that affects your life like how is your life better or worse because someone else's sexual orientation like they're not they're not forcing you to fucking have sex with them precisely like my my thing has always been like as long as whatever you're doing is a consensual and b you're not trying to force it upon me right there you go like (laughs) like yeah my thing is just like look is like i fucking one fucking rule right just be respectful yeah exactly right whatever it is whatever you're into whoever you're dating whoever you like whatever it is like anything in life just be fucking respectful simple as that exactly 